So uh, when you step back and look at the world's oceans, the biggest threat to them probably by far is climate change. You know, the, the reality is that the, um, the oceans are warming. They're warming faster than scientists ever thought. And sadly, this is going to have huge implications for the world's coral reefs. Uh, we're going to see very significant migrations of fish as the temperatures change and the habitats change. But if you step back and, and say, well, climate change is the number one threat, what's the second biggest threat to the oceans? That is probably overfishing. Mm -hmm. And it is something that is still happening systemically throughout the oceans. Um, there are examples of countries doing better and better jobs of managing their fisheries. The United States is actually one of them. Um, Europe is getting better and better. Uh, some of the stalwart improvements have happened in places like Iceland and Norway and Australia, um, New Zealand. But pretty much a lot of the rest of the world is in a situation where they're, they're either not managing most of their fisheries, they're only managing a small amount of their fisheries. And in many, many parts of the world, certainly most of the developing world, there's literally no fisheries management that happens at all. Um, and the unfortunate reality, what this means is there's less fish in the sea, which means less fish for people to eat. And it really changes the whole balance of the ecosystem because it is so systemic uh, throughout the world. Is overfishing as simple as just taking out more fish than can be maintained? You're, you're taking out too many. The population can't keep itself up at a, a healthy balance level. It's that simple? Correct. Correct. And what it's like a bank account. You know, if you keep your principal in your bank account, you'll be making interest and you will get more and more money over time. If you start depleting that principal, you will not get any interest and eventually you're going to run out of money. And that's essentially what goes on in the world's oceans. Now, where it gets a little more tricky is you could imagine, for example, a parrotfish. Uh, uh, many people might know this as a colorful reef fish. And it's a very attractive fish for many um, people in the Caribbean, uh, particularly spear fishermen. They love going after parrotfish. They taste good. The unfortunate reality, though, is parrotfish have a really fundamental role in an ecosystem. They're herbivores. They are the, the fish that cleans up the algae off the coral reef. And once you take those herbivores out of that ecosystem, the whole reef changes and the whole ecosystem dynamic changes. So what we see with fisheries management, it isn't just about managing single species anymore. We really have to look at the totality of the ecosystem because just by overfishing one fish, you can actually have cascading effects throughout the ecosystem. Yeah, sure. That that whole food chain and the way everything works together. Are there any statistics on just, you know, what percent of the world's fisheries are, you know, um, are unsustainable right now or on the verge of collapse or whatever it might be? Yes. Um, and there are, um, as you would imagine, there's lots of different opinions on this. Um, the official opinion by what's called the FAO, the Food and Agricultural Organization, has upwards, well, probably about 80 percent of the world's fisheries are either overfished or at maximum capacity, meaning mm. you can't take any more of those fish or they are actually already subject to overfishing. Um, there's a lot of other studies that have been down out there that suggest the problem is far, far worse. Um, you know, essentially, even FAO would agree with this. We haven't had an increase in wild capture fisheries probably since the mid 1980s, early 1990s. We've been kind of at a plateau, despite the reality that there's been more increased effort in trying to get fish. And this is a classic case, a classic sign of overfishing. Now, the, one of the most important things to keep in mind is that these global pictures that I've given you of a kind of a global world that is either at the verge or already overfishing in many cases, these are for only the fisheries where we have decent data. And the vast majority of the fish in the world, we have no data on. And there, it, most of the science suggests that for coastal fisheries, these reef fisheries, or fisheries imagined in Asia or in Africa, um, these are places where there's very little data, and all the data that we have suggests they are massively overfished. 